Okay, welcome to another video. So I thought what we could do today is take a look at the newest version of Pop! OS which has just been released and is version 20.10 which, as I'm sure you've probably guessed, is based on Ubuntu 20.10. So I'm in the live environment right now and the ISO size for this one is around about 2.2 GB. So with that being said, what we're going to do is run through the Pop! OS installer and install it natively to this computer. So English is the language and we're looking for United Kingdom which is right about there. So it selected the correct keyboard layout, so now let's just test it in that box below to make sure it's set it correctly. It has indeed, so let's continue. Okay, I'm just going to leave it on the default for English UK. Right, so we've got three options here of how we can go about installing Pop! OS. The first one being a clean install, which is going to erase everything on your disk and install a completely fresh copy of Pop! OS. Or we could do a refresh install, which will reinstall while keeping user account and files. Applications will need to be reinstalled manually. And then last of all, we have custom, which is where you're going to go in and create your own partitions manually and install it like that. But what we're going to do is use the clean install, which should also create us a recovery partition, which we'll check out once we've reached the desktop. Okay, and the drive we're going to be using for today's video is the Sabrent NVMe. Right, so we could set up drive encryption all from within the installer here, but for the sake of today's video, we're going to go ahead and press a don't encrypt. Okay, so the installation has begun. I'll pause the video here and be back in just a moment. Okay, so the installation has complete and that was finished in no time at all. And I'd actually forgot just how quick and easy the Pop! OS installer is, which makes for it to be one of the more user-friendly installers out there. Now, you might have noticed we didn't have an option to create a user account. That will happen when we do our first startup in the welcome screen. So with that being said, let's reboot and check out our freshly installed Pop! OS desktop. Right, so we have landed at the welcome screen. So what we're going to do is just very quickly skip through all of these steps until we get to the user account part. So next, next. I'm going to disable location services though. Next. Time zone's looking all good. Next. And I'm also going to skip online accounts, but we could always go into GNOME settings once we're installed to set those up if we wanted to. Okay, and here we are at the user account steps. And I think this is the last step. It is indeed, so now we can start using Pop! OS. Right, so here we are at the desktop, and I'm quite a big fan of how they've set up GNOME here, so it doesn't differ too much from the stock experience. It's quite a nice, clean, sleek implementation, but it does have quite a few little cool, unique features that distinguish it from some of the other distributions out there. So before we start taking a look around, we are going to very quickly jump into GNOME Disks, just to show you how it has partitioned our disks. So as you can see here, the majority of our storage is going to be assigned to root using the ext4 file system but then we also have a recovery partition here which is for added bit of peace of mind and it uses 4.3 gb then we also have a swap partition which is of a similar size and is 4.3 gb too so one of the newer features that have made it into this release is a newer version of the gnome desktop bringing us up to version 3.38.1 which means all of the new features and improvements that made it into that release will also be present here in our Pop! OS desktop. For example, as you can see, our application kind of dashboard is a bit cleaner and we no longer have the Frequence App tab and we can pretty much move these around and organize them in any way we see fit, as well as do our folders, etc. What I tend to do is move all of my most used applications to the top row. That way they're always sort of within clicks reach and they don't move from that position and it makes life a little bit easier. And as we are now also using Ubuntu 20.10 as the base, we'll also be shipping with a new more fresh kernel, which is going to be version 5.8. Now, I do believe we just got a little notification for some updates. Let's pop open our notification center. And as you can see, there, there's two updates available for your system. So clicking that notification should launch us directly into the Pop Shop, which is Pop OS's own application store, a little bit like GNOME software. And here we go. So here is where you're going to be managing most of your package installations and updates. So what we're going to do is run this update, which is going to be Firefox and operating systems updates, which totals at 65.2 MB. So what I'm going to do now is pause the video and come back once this has finished. OK, so we're all up to date and should be good to go. So we're going to close Pop Shop for now, but we will come back to it in just a moment. So jumping into the applications, this is another thing that I really do quite appreciate from Pop OS. They don't bloat you out of loads of unnecessary applications out of the box like, you know, a lot of the GNOME games and just stuff you never use and end up removing a lot of it or replacing it with your own preferred application. So we've got a very nice minimal selection here and it includes pretty much the sort of 
Bare essentials most users are going to need to get off their feet and up and running from the first time they turn their computer on. So we have Nautilus for files. Our default web browser is Firefox. Our default desktop email client is Geary. Now I don't hate Geary, but I will be replacing this with Evolution plus Evolution EWS because it's my preferred email application and I kind of like the way it works on GNOME and integrates nicely and I can use my Office 365 work accounts and all of that good stuff without too much trouble. Now we also have some Office applications here from the LibreOffice suite of applications like Writer and all of these will be a nicer newer version of 7.0.2.2. And there we go and it should also have dictionary support out of the box which of course it does so we can do our autocorrect and be all good. Now I don't think there's really too much additional stuff we need to look at in the application so of course we have the pop shop, gnome settings, terminal, text editor and weather and that's pretty much it for the most part. Of course we do have the utilities and systems folder and we will quickly jump into the startup applications so we can see what starts up when we first boot up. So we have the firmware manager and the flat pack transition. Now I've heard quite a bit about this but I've never actually seen it in action. So what this will do is check for depreciated Debian packages and display a notification if found for a sort of alternative in a flat pack variation as opposed to a deb. I've never used it, I'm not sure what I think of it, but it's there. We then have IM launch, pop OS release check and the SSH key agent. Now before we take a look at some other stuff, we are going to jump into the GNOME settings. And because what I like about pop OS's whole theming side of it, they have very nice default themes, which you can see right now is in the dark mode. Now if we go into appearance, we can also change it into the light theme as well, which again is a very nice theme. I'm much more of a dark theme kind of guy, but for a change we're going to leave it on the light theme just for a moment. So let's see what our light theme looks like with some applications open. So let's open up Nautilus, which is our files manager, and let's also open up LibreOffice Writer once more. And there we go, so it's a very nice little theme there. What's happened to our window? That's gone a bit crazy, isn't it? <laughs> Okay, and one more thing I want to check out in GNOME settings, and then we're going to look at my favourite part of Pop OS, which of course is the Pop Shell. So if we go back into GNOME settings and go into the display settings now, another cool thing is the fractional scaling, which we can enable out of the box. So by default, we have scale of just a 100 and 200 percent, but enabling fractional scaling will give us more incremental changes like 125, 150, and 175. Brilliant. Right, let's keep moving. Now we are going to go towards my favourite part of all of pop os which is the pop shell which is also available in a lot of the other gnome desktops now but what we're going to do is jump into tile windows and what that will now do is allow us to tile our windows in a nice little layout like so but there's some new features that i'm quite excited of checking out so what we're going to do is go into floating window exceptions so add exceptions by selecting currently running applications and windows and what that will do is then turn that window into a floating window so we can move it all around much like the window that we are using right now for the floating window exceptions so let's go into our applications and see what would be a good application to test this out with calculator is probably a good one i can't see why you'd always want your calculators to be tiled so as you can see there by default when you're in the tiling view it will tile it like any other window and if we press select nice so it just opens up the sort of overview of gnome it doesn't use some third party way of doing it so it's using like the desktop strengths to fulfill its purpose so let's click calculator right so we've got a couple of options float the selected window or all windows from the application so let's go for this app's windows for now and there we go so as you can see a nice and easy floating window and if we close that and reopen it it should still again open in the floating mode brilliant now it appears that it's a very easy removal we press this little trash can do we get a confirmation nope so it just takes it away straight away and then it's back into the tiling view so let's try this with a few other applications now so what we're going to do is open up get it right so that, of course that's gone into the tiling mode so we're going to go select choose get it and we're going to do it for a different way now so current window only so what i think that means is now that we've got get it floating if we were to close it and then reopen it I'm not sure, but I think it might just open in the tiling mode. We'll have a look to see how that works. So let's close that. Let's open it up again. And has that gone tiling? It has. So as you can see, though, that is, of course, tiling. So if we close that off again and then make a new one. So let's go to select, get it, and then do this apps window. It now should sort of retain that. And then every time we close it and reopen it, it should go straight into the floating mode. So let's give that a go. Brilliant, very handy feature, I like that a lot. Now, the thing that I'm most excited about is a new feature called stacking, 
which if you've ever used um, Haiku or seen a video about it, I think it's going to function much like that. So I'm going to pause the video here because I'm going to need to go and see what the shortcuts are and then we'll take a look at stacking. Okay, so we're now on the System76 blog, which is where they've got the release notes for this version of Pop OS. And the feature I want to check out the most is stacking, but I will leave a link to this in the description of this video for those of you who want to go over some of the other features that I might have missed in this video. So here we go, stacking. Similar to tabs in your web browser, stack tiled windows on top of one another for easier organization. First, use super plus S to convert a window into a stack. Using super plus enter and your arrow keys or Vim shortcuts will add a shortcut to your stack. You can also launch an application into the stack using super and in the slash to add it automatically. Super plus left or right allows you to cycle between them. Lastly, move windows out of the stack and press super and S to convert it back to a standard window. So the stacking appears to only work while you're in the sort of tiling view. So let's give that a go right now. So we're going to use this application window here, which is of course Firefox. If we press super and S, there we go. So instantly it's already changed the look. So we now have a little sort of title bar up here. And now let's try it out with a new application to launch with the super and slash. So let's open up get it for example and that hasn't worked let's try that again right so we're in right let's go back into the view and now let's try that again so let's try it with a terminal there we go so as you can see that's now stacked those one on top of each other and it seems to sort of operate very similar to how it does it on haiku and i wouldn't be too surprised if that's potentially where they got the idea from for that right let's try it with a few more applications and we'll try get it again and see if that will now open Although we did set a exception for it, didn't we? I think that's what's causing the issue there. So if we go back into our floating windows exceptions and remove get it and try it again, I see no reason why that won't now work. So super. There we go. So let's see how crazy we can really get with this then. And of course, we can use super and the directionals to cycle through them. I really like this already. Okay, let's also open up LibreOffice Writer. There we go, that's worked absolutely fine. And let's open up the Pop OS shop, Pop Shop. Brilliant, again, working absolutely fine. And let's also open up, what else have we got? I'm aware we don't have that many applications, do we? So we could have also opened up Files and Geary. Let's try that out. Right, again, Files. There we go, and now let's try Geary. Yes, I know, I know. Okay, we'll need to sort of set up Geary for that to work. But for the most part, I think that's absolutely brilliant. So again, we can just cycle through them like so. And yeah, that's definitely giving me haiku vibes. I like that a lot. In fact, I'm really liking the direction that Pop Show is going in and just Pop OS as a whole, to be honest with you. Right, let's get out of this view then. So we can just use Super and Q and we can close a lot of them. And now if we wanted to just go back into a normal view mode, we'd press Super and S. And there we go. We are now out of stacking mode. That is a really cool little feature. Okay, what we're going to do now is install HTOP and go ahead and do a reboot, see how much RAM we're using on a fresh boot, and then we're going to play around, install a few applications in the Pop Shop, and just give some final thoughts of Pop OS 20.10. So, sudo apt install HTOP. Right, I'm going to pause the video here and we'll be back in just a moment. Okay, so we've just started up and we're about to run HTOP. Before we do, I'm not expecting it to be very low. I've always found Pop OS to be quite hungry for RAM and I'd always sit around the 1 GB mark on a fresh install. So hopefully it's gone down a little bit. So that's enough preamble, let's have a look. Oh, okay, well, so again, it's not super low or anything, but it's a definite improvement from the last time I checked out Pop OS. So we're now sort of hovering around the 880, 870 mark there. So while it's not super light, that is definitely an improvement from the last time I checked it out. Now what we're going to do is just have a little look through the pop shop, install some applications and have a little bit of a play around and then we're going to wrap it up there. So I quite like Pop OS's application store here. It's quite a clean interface and they have done a good job of just making it quite streamlined. So if we go into the settings here, you will notice that we have Flatpak support enabled out of the box and it even has the FlatHub repo added, which means we can do all of our applications from here as well as our flat packs and our debs. Now, if I remember rightfully, we don't have snap support out of the box enabled on Pop OS. Let's just double check before I uh, say something slightly wrong. So snap list 
there we go so as you can see we have no snaps and even snapd itself isn't installed so we're going to be using flat packs and devs for the most part unless you choose to install snapd okay so with that being said let's close this off and now let's search for some applications and of course it will find the devs and the flat packs so i'm going to need caden live i'm also going to need gnome tweaks so again as much as it's very useful to have the option to change the appearance theming in the actual settings there's still a lot that it can't do that tweaks can although we do have the extensions application installed out of the box so you can manage your extensions like so but again i still quite like to use gnome tweaks so we're going to go ahead and grab gnome tweaks and i'm going to need gimp and then while we're here i'm also going to grab steam I'm going to be making sure that we use the actual dev package of Steam and not the flat pack version. Okay, I hope that's the version that I think it is. Right, I'm going to pause the video here, let those applications install, and be back in just a moment. Okay, so I do believe our packages have now been installed. So let's pop open our applications and have a little look. There we go. So we now have Caden Live, Steam, GIMP, and Tweaks. Now I am going to quickly go into Tweaks because I do still, as much as I like the tiling and all of that way of working, I'm still quite reliant on maximize and minimize because sometimes I'll turn tiling off depending on what desktop I'm on because there's certain workflows that don't work too great with it. So when I'm doing screen capturing with OBS and I've got things running, I don't much like to use tiling then, so I will toggle it off. And that's where things like maximize and minimize in your title bar come in handy. Now, while we're in here, I want to check if there's any additional icon themes installed out of the box. So we've got Gnome, Eduata, so we have two pop icon packs. We've got pop OS branding and pop. Let me just open up the files package and I want to see what the different differences in those themes. So here we are on the default pop theme. Let's now go ahead and change it to pop branding. Okay. Right, so that has changed quite a bit. I think I much prefer the standard pop theme. So we're going to go back. And actually I've grown to quite enjoy the pop sort of look and feel even the folder icons which i was never too keen on they're growing on me okay i think i'm gonna wrap it up there but all in all i think this is a very decent distribution and i was kind of slow to come around to the whole pop os sort of distribution but i think every time i use it i appreciate it a bit more and they're very quick to implement a lot of new features that many people might like i think it's especially good for a new user who just wants to get up and running with a nice fresh and attractive Linux distribution without having to worry about installing a lot of additional drivers etc especially for those that use NVIDIA. Thank you for watching if you've enjoyed this video please subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.